Scientists have uncovered a new blood type, and right now there's only one person in the world that has it. Why Native Americans have so much of blood? A genetic mystery. Most of the world is mixed. A blood in Europe, B in Asia, and AB scattered everywhere, although rare. Then there's O, staying steady in its presence in the world. But step into the Americas and the balance is gone. O blood takes over, not half, not even most, nearly all. Sometimes every single person in a tribe. That didn't seem normal, so how? This question has kept scientists guessing for decades, and they've been able to explain why Native Americans have so much O blood. To understand this mystery, we first need some foundation. The ABO blood system all comes down to a single gene that can show up in three main forms, A, B, and O. If you have the A version, your red blood cells carry the A antigen. If you have B, they carry the B antigen. If you inherit one of each, your AB and carry both. But then there's the O version. And if you have it instead of A or B, your cells carry neither. That matters a lot because your immune system is kind of like a guard dog. It attacks anything it doesn't recognize. And in the case of blood transfusions, that means antigens. Type O blood doesn't have these antigens, so it sort of slides past the guard dog without any trouble. That's why O negative is called the universal donor. In an emergency, it can save almost anyone's life. But while this looks simple in a hospital, the way blood types are spread across the world tells a much bigger story. Each population has its own mix, shaped by migrations, isolation, and even survival against diseases. That brings us to why Native Americans have so much of it. When you look at the global map of blood types, you'll notice certain patterns that are hard to miss. In Scandinavia, type A is very common. In India, type B shows up more often. Across most of South America, O dominates, but nowhere does O stand out as strongly as in Native Americans, where it doesn't only dominates. It also almost overshadows the other types completely. In some indigenous groups, O makes up over 90%, and in others, it's the only type found at all. In fact, when you look at the numbers, it's really obvious. Globally, averages are that O is approximately 45%, A is about 40%, B is approximately 11%, and AB is about 4%. In the Americas, those averages change. Among many indigenous tribes, from the Navajo and Sioux in the north, to the Quechua and Aymara in the Andes, and even isolated Amazonian groups, Type O is above 80%. In some communities, every single blood sample tested has been O. From Alaska to Patagonia, O reigns supreme. No other large region on Earth shows such dominance of a single blood type. Now this raises the big question, how did that happen? Was it a genetic accident, a survival advantage, or something that maintained its place when their ancestors first crossed into the Americas? To find the answer, we have to go back in time all the way to the first people who stepped across the land bridge of Beringia. That's where the mystery started. Scientists usually explain this mystery with three major factors. The first is called a migration bottleneck. About 15 to 20,000 years ago, small bands of hunter-gatherers crossed from Siberia into Alaska over the land bridge known as Beringia. If those groups happened to have mostly the O version of the blood type gene, then that's what got passed down. Think of it like starting a family tree with just a handful of people. Of course, whatever traits they have, their descendants will inherit, and sometimes that locks in for good. A few founder families can end up influencing the DNA of whole continents, and that's most likely what happened here. Once those first people entered the Americas, their genetic makeup was already limited, and O had the upper hand from the start. The second and third factors are genetic drift and natural selection. Genetic drift is basically the power of chance. For thousands of years, Native American groups lived in isolation, with little or no mixing with outside populations. That meant there was no new source of A or B alleles, so O just stayed dominant. And in many tribes, it completely took over. Natural selection might have played a role too. O blood offers certain advantages, like a better defense against severe malaria, although it still comes with downsides, such as a higher risk of cholera. But since malaria wasn't a major issue in most of the Americas, having O blood may have been a huge benefit, or at least not a disadvantage. Whether by chance, by survival pressures, or both, O blood became common in the genetic identity of the first American people. 
To really understand how this affected their cultures, we have to look not just at the genes, but at the history and traditions that grew around them. For indigenous peoples, blood was never just a medical term. It had a lot of deep meaning. In many native myths and oral traditions, blood stood for life itself, for kinship, and for the sacred bond tying people to their ancestors and to the land. This spiritual weight made blood something more than biology. It represented identity and belonging. When Europeans arrived, they sometimes noticed the unusual uniformity of O-blood among native groups. Early anthropologists even used it as a so-called marker of racial purity, making it into misguided attempts at classification. While those old studies were often harmful and inaccurate, there was actually a grain of truth in the observation. O really was so dominant among Native Americans that it worked almost like a genetic fingerprint. Today, population geneticists still use this clue. When they find ancient remains with high frequencies of O blood, it's often a clear sign of indigenous American ancestry. But blood type didn't just stay important in the past. It still affects life and death today. Type O, especially the O negative form, is central to modern medicine because it can be safely given to almost anyone in an emergency. For indigenous communities with very high O frequencies, this sometimes makes transfusions simpler since donors and recipients are more likely to match. But as you'd expect, it also creates some challenges. O negative blood is always in demand worldwide and shortages can hit hard, especially in regions where healthcare access is already stretched thin. So how popular is this blood type outside the Americas? Well, when we look beyond the Americas, we find that O blood isn't limited to native peoples. Some Pacific Islander groups also have very high levels of O blood, as do regions of Central and South America, where indigenous ancestry is still strong. It turned out that these patterns were left behind by ancient human migrations. When people moved out of Asia, some went east across the Pacific and others crossed the Bering Land Bridge into the Americas. In both cases, O alleles were carried in large amounts, and through a mix of chance and isolation, they became dominant. Mapping these blood type frequencies across the globe is almost like following the footsteps of our ancestors, showing how their journeys led to the medical traits we see today. So O blood in this case, isn't just a Native American thing. It's a genetic marker of how humans spread across oceans and continents, carrying a piece of genetic history with them wherever they went. Because the frequency of O blood is so extreme among Native Americans, it has often drawn attention and with attention came myths. Some fringe theories did try to explain it in supernatural terms. They suggested alien ancestry or linked it to biblical lost tribes. Others speculated it was somehow destined to vanish, but science tells a much clearer and more grounded story. The O allele is recessive but stable, meaning it doesn't just disappear as long as O carriers continue to exist. In fact, far from fading away, O is now the most common blood type in the entire world. What seemed strange or mysterious at first actually ended up fitting into the bigger framework of population genetics, where founder effects, drift, and isolation can explain extreme patterns. While European populations changed over time with waves of Celts, Romans, and later Slavs mixing with their DNA, Native American O blood still stands out as proof of that first migration across Beringia. It shows that even something as microscopic as the type of blood flowing in our veins has the imprint of history. If you enjoyed this exploration of how and why Native Americans have so much O blood, then hit the like button and share it with everyone you know who would love to see it. To stay updated on more ancient history and recent impressive DNA analyses on ancient history like this, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next videos. We hope to see you in the next one.